But better late than never. Welcome. Hello. I'm late. It's I'm late. Fuck what are you going to do? Lander. My wife really likes the back I had shit to do yesterday. What an appropriately titled podcast. Better late than never. Here I am. New episodes every Wednesday. Well, that's what I say anyway. Uh, let's turn down the intro let's just get right to it better late than never episode i think it's like 95 or 96 or some shit i don't really care actually although i think that uh oh i dropped some hang on hang on i think for episode 100 i should do something i should give away some hoodies or something i should i don't know i should do something now if i do decide to give away hoodies they're from my store Right, the the uh, the bag milk store that I use to raise money for some cha- for for uh, the Edmonton Humane Society. So if I do send you a hoodie, and it kind of falls apart, it's because, I mean, they're on a fucking print on demand, and uh, <laughs> you notice I don't really push that gear anymore because it kind of sucks. But the point is raising money for charity, and I appreciate everybody that has contributed so far. Shout out to the audio department for helping us out here. If the podcast has sounded better over the last year and a half, it's because of the audio department. They explained things to me. Thank you, Dan. The audio department.ca. Go book some studio time, record podcasts like this one. Do whatever you want there. Spoken word poetry. I would like to read haikus. Can I do that at the audio department? Yes, you can do. Yes, you can. You can read haikus. You can read uh, any kind of literature you'd like. I don't know why you would want to, but it is what it is. Anyway, let's get right to it. So this week was busy. I'm sorry. I'm late. Yesterday was Wednesday the 19th. I would normally record on Wednesdays. I had a weird day. So taking you behind the scenes a little bit at The Nation, we do as much as this right now, what I'm doing is my job. Another part of the job is making sure that um, Jay's vision as our president kind of, I help execute that. I give ideas, I give feedback. And then part of that is doing quarterly plannings every quarter. And yesterday was that day for a quarterly planning meeting. They just take all day. So by the time I got home, it was like five o'clock or something like that, which isn't late. Like I'm recording right now at 623. It's not like I couldn't have done it. But from the time I got home, essentially, I just had to take my dog out, take the homie out, Frank, you know, him. took him for a walk because my missus and I went to Volbeat last night, Volbeat. But on Tuesday, went to another Riverhawks game. Love the Riverhawks. I finally got a hat. You saw that on my Instagram. What was interesting? That was probably, and it's interesting. That's one of my most liked stories on Instagram that I've ever had. I don't know. It was just a hat. I just, I was just like, I finally got one. Actually, that reminds me. Uh, I need a pen. I owe Jay $40 for the hat. I was, uh, as my usual self, hang on. I'm going to write a little note down here. Send Jay hat money. Being my typical self, we went down to the river Hawks. We had our big, but one of our big bosses from Toronto in his name's Jake. And uh, we got to spend some time with him a couple of days. Again, we were doing some like business shit with Jake. That's why he was in town. But on his last night, we took him to the Riverhawks game. Ended up being great. Our boy Tom Poole came up in the clutch. Riverhawks won. It was a beautiful thing. Kaka! But we got to host Jake, and it was cool to spend some time with him and just kind of show him what we talk about. He's like, you guys talk about the Riverhawks a lot, and it's because fucking product is good, man. Down on the field. He had a great time. He even ended up buying a Riverhawks hat as well. So, again, my typical self, I'm very lazy. Jay and Jake were going to buy hats or at least look at hats in the merch section at the Riverhawks game. And I was just like, I want a hat. You coming? No. Can you buy me one? I will send you money. And Jay's like, oh, fuck sakes. Okay. (laughs) He did it, though. And an additional assist goes to Jay, not just for paying for my merch. But also, he goes, what size of snapback do you have? And I'm like, probably a big one, because I've got a huge melon. And he goes, okay, no problem. And then he comes back down, and he gets me a small, medium snapback. And he goes, buddy, good thing I'm looking out for you, because that hat was way too fucking big for you. You would have never worn it. So shout out to Jay again. And then, like I said last night, that led into our quarterly planning meeting. We were in a session for about seven hours. Yes, we actually plan things. 
not all of this is spontaneous, you know? We have to look ahead, see what's going on. So after that was over, a uh, full day session in there with the team, and it was really good, and it was productive, and I think that we got a lot done in there. Um, I came home, walked the dog, and then it was time for Volbeat. So Volbeat, full disclosure, I didn't know a fucking song. Frankly, I had only heard the name Volbeat because one dude, one dude that I knew when I was younger liked them. He goes, oh, I love Volbeat. Do you? I was like, I don't know know what that is. As it turns out, my missus also loves Volbeat. So she goes, if I get tickets, do you want to come? I was like, of course. Let's go to a rock show. Let's see what it's all about, man. I was like, where are they playing? The Windspear Center? She goes, no, they're at Roger's place. I was like, holy shit, these fucking Danes, they can move them, you know? (laughs) So anyway, we go there and we get to Roger's place and um, had a blast. They put on a great show. Did I know any of the songs? No. But did they entertain me for an hour and a half? Fucking right they did. So shout out to Volbeat. I had a great time, despite not knowing a single song by this band. Oh, actually, they have a song, My Body, it's called. It's a cover of a young The Giants song. I That's the one Volbeat song I know, because it's a cover of another song I know. And they didn't play it, so I was just like, are they going to do the one I know? And uh, me missus had the set list, because she looked it up. <laughs> and she's like, no. I was like, ah. Well, way you go. There's another thing I'm going to bring up from the Volby concert and the righteous sack beating. It was one of the most outrageous things I've ever seen in person. I've I've been to I've been lucky. I've been to a lot of hockey games. I've been to a lot of concerts. I've been to just varying events in my life, and I saw something last night that I've never seen before. And I'm going to share that with you with the righteous sack beating. Don't forget about the nighttime game they did at Volby. I was in the pit, you know. Volbeat fucking rules. Satan loves Volbeat. There's something about the Danes. There's something about Vikings making metal that Satan loves. Not to mention they've got that song, The Devil's Bleeding Crown. The Devil's Bleeding Crown, that's metal as fuck. I'm in the pit. I'm throwing my metal horns up. I'm kicking. I'm punching. I'm stealing shoes. I grabbed the guy's wallet out of his pants. I took his cash. I stuck his wallet back in there. And then when he went out for probably like a pilsner or something, he didn't have any cash because all Satan got it done because I was having the time of my life at Volbeat. I was in there. I was in the mix. I was in the pit. I was crowd surfing. I was everywhere, man. Volbeat fucking rules. I had a good time. Whoops. (laughs) I had a good time. (laughs) Wahoo! Uh, Anyway, so that's where I was last night. I'm sorry I'm a day late, but now you know why. Is that a good excuse? No, but when you call your podcast better late than never, even though there's a play on milk in there, sometimes the, uh, the, way, the way she goes, you know, sometimes it's the way she goes. It's not like, oh, there's nation radio where if I had something to do, I could just be like, Tyler, I need you to do it. And he'd be like, all right. Can't always avoid the grind, you know, can't always avoid the grind. That takes us into the news. is brought to you by me hello and me if you would like to sponsor the segment hit me up bag milk at the news is here although it is light this week i will say if you're looking for oilers news it is not the time for you so we're gonna run through this really quick and then we're gonna get into sh- some shenanigans because i'm looking at my voicemail page i've got a lot of voicemails this week so we're gonna just kind of rip through the boring part we're gonna get to some voicemails the righteous sack beating I'm actually looking forward to. It was one of those things where, you know what? I'll just get to it. <laughs> Going back to Volbeat. <laughs> I didn't steal your wallet, did I? Nope. No, it wasn't you, Satan. Good, because the guy didn't have any money, and his credit was really poor. Really? Well, I don't know how you knew what his credit looked like just by stealing his wallet, but... In the news, if you are looking for Edmonton no other stuff to tickle your fancy in mid-July. There's not a whole lot going on. So last week, the only thing that happened is Raphael Lavoie accepted his... uh, What is that called? Why can't I think of it? Qualifying offer. (laughs) Fuck, man. I've been drinking too much this week. That's what I know. Raphael Lavoie accepted his qualifying offer. Jason Greger for OilersNation.com 
called Lavoie on the phone, just kind of wanted to talk about what, how his year went, uh, what he's planning on doing in the future, and why he's excited to stick with the organization. So, and I quote from Raphael Lavoie, I'm excited for the year, and I want to see what I can do at the NHL level. I am betting on myself, and we'll see where we, that leaves me. I asked my agent what he thought was best for me, and he thought that... Uh, I asked my agent what he thought was best for me, and we thought that was the best thing for me, and that's why we took the qualifying offer. You don't want to use injuries as an excuse, but the first game I played last season was my first game in seven months. So if you don't know much about Raphael Lavoie's season last year, he started off really slow. He didn't score a goal in, I think it was like 18 or 20. I'm doing this off dumb, so if it's not right, give me a fucking break. He didn't score a goal for about 18 games or something, but over the back half of the season, he got red hot. In 61 games, he had 25 goals, 20 assists, and 45 points. So he had a decent little AHL season. Now he's going to try and transition to the bigs. You don't want to use injuries as an excuse, but the first game I played last season was my first game in seven months. It was the first major injury of my career, and I had to regain confidence that everything was good. Then I had to get my timing and speed back in the game. It took a while to adjust, but then things took off after about 20 games. Confidence was a big part of it, and I was playing efficiently. I was taking a lot of pucks to the net, generating a lot of scoring chances, whether it be finding guys on my line or creating my own chances. But I also, I was also efficient without the puck. Since I've been in Bakersfield, we worked on that a lot, as well as being reliable everywhere on the ice. I think that is really what helped me have success offensively. Raphael Lavoie is a big right-handed shooter, so you know that there's a room for him on this roster, provided that he earns the opportunity. He is 6'4", he is a tall drink of water at 22 years old. we got to see what the kid can do. Will that be this year? I would bet on him playing NHL games this year. How many? I have no idea. But I would bet on him playing. Is it the right decision? I don't know. I don't know. But we move on. In sad news, Jeremy Kupel has left. And I, uh, I, I, I'm upset by it. According to TSN's Ryan Rashog, Jeremy Kupel left the organization on good terms. He was grateful for his time in the organization. But this one hurts. If you do not know who Jeremy Koopal is, first of all, give your head a shake. Second, Jeremy Koopal was the Oilers goalie coach. He was the one that if there was an offside, he was the one that was going to get, make sure that it was called back. He was so fucking good the last couple of years. He had one that one game. I wish I could remember specifically who it was, but he had three goals called back in a single game last year. He was so dialed in at what's going on in that blue line. And now the Oilers are going to be without him. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I'm going to miss him. Jeremy Kubel, I don't know what kind of witchcraft you had in that book of yours, but I hope you had to leave that spell book with the Oilers. You may not know who we are, but we know you, Jeremy Koopal. I was actually encouraging people to buy your jersey. You don't even have a number. You know what I was going to put? Koopal, dash three, or plus three. Three goals called back? It was going to make sense to me, damn it. Fuck. Anyway, Jeremy Koopal, I hope the family reasons that you uh, chose to leave the organization are, I hope you get to tend to them, because ultimately that's what matters most, right? I'll miss you, but I'm selfish, you know? Anyway, I'll miss you, Jeremy Kubel. If you play against the Oilers, though, you're not allowed to call goals back. That's just how it goes. Uh, the other uh, the other news that everybody's talking about is this could only happen in Alberta slash in Edmonton. I'm sure by the time you hear this that you've heard about the Alberta government auction website where they had a donair costume available for auction well as i'm recording right now on thursday at 6 35 post midday is that what pm stands for hang on a second what does pm stand for post meridium all right post meridium that bid i'm gonna refresh now Current high bid blowers and grafting at $7,200 for this fucking Donair costume. I love it so much. What's not to love about a Donair costume 
going up for auction at $7,200 here in Edmonton. It's ridiculous. So I'm looking at the bidders, the last 10 bidders. We've got Primetime Donair in there. We've got King of Donair in there. We've got Swiss Donair in there. We've got Blowers and Grafton in there. This is turning into an all-out bidding war between the Donair shops in the city, and I love it. We actually were trying to convince Jake, again, business daddy, when he was in town. We're like, we need this Donair thing. Listen, I don't know if we can just place a bid or if we can just buy it out, but we need that corporate credit card, and we need it now. And he goes, all right, well... No, but best of luck raising the money to buy the fucking Donair costume. And uh, didn't really think about it again. So then 24 hours, I guess 48 hours later now, that bid is, like I said, $7,200 to Blowers and Grafton. It was about 500 bucks when we were trying, we were playing around with it. This is just the funniest thing to me. I'll keep checking back throughout the episode to see if it's changed, but you doing air shops are making me very happy with this. The, the promo you guys are getting for each other. It's amazing. Listen, I love Donairs. I had a Donair with sales guy. Jared last week was the last one I had. We had a late night Donair. It was exactly how you need it. When you need it after a night of boozing. And now this, this is the most Edmonton thing ever, and I love it. This is just one of those things that only happens in Edmonton. You have a Donair costume up for auction in Toronto. No one gives two thunderous fucks, nor do they even probably know what a Donair is. Anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> I love it. I Like I said, I'll keep checking back in uh, as the show goes on just to see where we're at. Um, I hope it shoots the moon. It's so funny to me. The other thing I wanted to bring up uh, in the news, because there's really nothing going on, is another fake Oilers Nation account popped up on Instagram. And I don't understand the point of it. They pretend to be us. They mimic our pages. And then they change the handle. What are you trying to do? It's one of those things where this has happened a handful of times over the years that I've been working at ON, and I'd never understand it. There was even a fake bag milk on Instagram for a while. He was basically, he or she, whatever, was basically... Every post I would post, they would post like an hour later. <laughs> it was very odd. Eventually, it just stopped and got taken down, but I don't know. This is just another one, and I guess I don't get it. I find it funny. So they go around and they follow everybody in the Nation Network. And then my phone, from varying people throughout the day, they go, hey, uh, just so you know, there is a fake Oilers Nation account <laughs> again. And we're like, well, that's sad. It's sad for you, not for us. We think it's funny. Unless you try to just steal our shit. Don't steal our shit. Start your own shit. Uh, in other news that I got to touch on, this one's another sad one. Today, July 20th, is Oscar Clefbaum's 30th birthday. The fact that he is only 30 and he is retired from the NHL as a result of the shoulder issues that he was having, just it bums me out. And I don't think enough people outside of Edmonton give the Oilers enough credit for what they had to deal with on their blue line. <clears throat> Oscar Clefbaum, to me, arguably Oilers' best defenseman. Great contract, by the way, which is now over. He had to walk away for nothing because his body wouldn't allow him to play anymore. Then... At the expansion draft, the Seattle Kraken take Adam Larson from us, and there was the reasons that Larson wanted to leave that I re completely respect. But from an Oilers perspective, we lost a second pairing. How much different would the Oilers D look right now if we had Clefbaum and Larson in? Yeah, we probably wouldn't have Ekholm. That would hurt. I love Ekholm. I still look at that picture that Waz took of him at the brick tournament last weekend. Looks good. But how much better would our defense be if our second pairing had Clef and Larson on it, right? Can't just be me. Can't just be me that thinks about these things, you know? Can't just be me. Anyway, happy birthday, Oscar. I hope you still have the abs. I haven't seen a recent photo of you. I hope you still have the abs. I hope you still have uh, your joie de vivre. You're 30 now. At some point, you are going to wake up. Well, unfortunately, you already have the shoulder issue. At some point in the near future, you're going to wake up with a sore back, and you're not going to know how it happened, and it's because you're 30. Sucks, man. We're all getting there. But happy birthday, Oscar.
the news is over because there wasn't very much news at all not so much news not so much news very little news this is captain felton in vancouver with your fair weather fan report canucks have blown three straight games with multi-goal leads so quads in the fan base can suck hard for bedard back to you <laughs> bag milk <laughs> i didn't know what that bumper was i uh, just said i just said captain felton fair weather fans um they sucked hard and did not get bedard so what are you gonna do for our friends at Betway, provided that you are 19 plus and could do so responsible, let's talk a little betting. There's not a lot of betting that I want to do right now. Again, I still am learning how to bet on the Jays. The other day, I am full disclosure. The other day, I bet against Alec Manoa, and uh, I told Jake, our business daddy from Toronto, and he's a massive Jays guy, and he goes, "What the fuck, man?" And then he looked at the score, and he goes, ah. "At the time." Coincidentally, I was also wearing a Boba Shed jersey. <laughs> the thing I want to touch on this week, though, because it's fucking funny. F1, if you don't follow F1, like, I get it. Cars go Zoom. Some people like it. Some people don't. I get it. What I want to talk about is how just... How crazy... This sport is with its athletes. Nick DeVries was a rookie driver this year for a car called, uh, or a, a team called Alpha Tori. And I've read, and I'm, I'm still new to F1, so I'm probably going to fuck things up. I've read it, you know, it can take a year, two, three, sometimes before you find your legs in a car like that because they're essentially spaceships on Earth. 11 races into this season, he got fired already in favor of Daniel Ricciardo, who was on the testing team for Red Bull, which is a, a associated, an associate of Alpha Tori. If you think about it, Alpha Tori would be Red Bull's uh, Bakersfield Condors. That's the best way to think about it. So anyway, they fire this rookie that was struggling, and he was struggling, but like a lot of people do. They gassed him already in favor of Daniel Ricardo, who used to be at Red Bull 100 years ago, quit, bounced around, and then he was a uh, free agent. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is if you bet on Daniel Ricardo to win the race, he's not going to win. Max Verstappen's probably going to win again. If you bet on Daniel Ricardo to win the race, it is plus 50,000. 50,000. So that means if you put $1 down and he actually won again, which he's not going to, that would be $500, $2, $1,000 return, $3, $1,500. You get it. It's just the funniest bet to me. And it reminds me of that clip on The Office where Kevin goes, if you can get 10,000 plus 10,000 odds on anything, you have to take it. And I kind of might. Who knows what could happen? Maybe everybody f fails to finish. Daniel Ricardo to finish top six is plus 2,500. Now, that one's a little bit more interesting to me. That one is a little bit more interesting. I, uh, I might dabble. I might dabble. Today, the Jays are playing the San Diego Padres. I didn't put any bets on this one. I just didn't know what to do. My bet, my pre build bet that I like to do with Betway, because I'm 19 plus and could do so responsibly, is both teams to score three runs. But as I'm recording the podcast right now, it is the top of the sixth inning. It is one nothing Toronto. So I'm kind of maybe glad I stayed away from it. Maybe. Daniel Ricardo plus 50,000. That's fucking funny. Well, I put a dollar on that for a chance to win 500. Why not throw my dollar away? I've done dumber things, I guess, in my life. You know? Of course you do. Of course you do. Nation. Worst host. Your Ram Chuck. I know. His meal choices are utter junk. Who the hell fries veggies drunk? Say it ain't so. Tyler won't go. He's celebrating. Cinco de Mayo. Say it ain't so. 
Oilers will go to the cup final and carry it home. Na 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 na. Budget Mark Hoppus, it's time for the Reggie Sack beating. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Trilogy Oilfield Rentals is an established provider of tools and expertise across multiple oilfield disciplines, specializing in rentals, pipe recovery, abandonments, and completions. Currently, they maintain full-time operating units in Provo's, Weyburn, and Kindersley. What kind of tools do you have? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Rental tools, fishing tools, coil tools, drilling tools, completion tools, every tool you could ever need, including mills and bits. I like to say the mills and bits part, because it reminds me of uh, bits and bites, not snack. I like them. I like the shreddies in there. I like the shreddies. And the circles. The O's. What are those? What are those called? The O's. I feel like they took uh, Cheerios Thunder, but whatever. Right sack beating this week for Trilogy Oilfield Rentals is going back to the Volby concert last night. You're not going to get mad that I stole your wallet, are you? You stole my wallet? Well, I had a little peek in there, and as usual, you don't have anything for sale. Well... I don't generally carry cash. Yeah, well, I looked at your array of credit cards, and those are not impressive either, guy. Yeah, all right. Last night at Volbeat, we were sitting in the Section 104, row 15. And on the end of the row, I was, in, you know, in the middle of the row, somewhere in the middle. And the end of the row, there was a woman in a bright pink, sh- uh, bright pink blazer. A bright pink blazer at a Volby concert. First of all, she stuck out like an orange hat with, with a yellow hat with an orange bill. It was very bright given the general dress of the people at a, I don't know, like a rock show. So to see a bright pink blazer, first of all, you don't see many of them at a rock show. To give you uh, an idea of who was there, there was a lot of dudes with no sleeves on. Does that make sense? All right. So this lady down at the end of the row, she was a single ticket on the end of the row at the aisle. Like she was at the stairs. All roads pass through Lady in the Pink. Now, that's fine. You want to go to a concert by yourself. I respect it. Maybe you didn't want, maybe nobody wanted to go see Volby with you. You like Volby. Nobody else does. I don't know, but I don't care. I love it. I go to movies by myself sometimes. I find it relaxing. You sit there. Empty, empty theater at like a Sunday matinee. It's great. So with her, however, she was not letting anyone pass by her to go up and buy drinks or go to the bathroom or go to buy merch or whatever you want to do. Now, I know it can be annoying when people are constantly getting up and walking past you. But if you are sitting at the end of the row, it's kind of your job. You are the person, you are the backup goaltender who is there to open the door for players when they get off. And yes, it's annoying that you're going to be like, oh, fuck, I got to stand three feet to the right again. But it's ridiculous. So what ended up happening is everybody in my row, myself included, we had to jump over the row in front to go around. And those people in front of us were very nice. Eventually, we were all on the same page, all of us in our row. Pink lady doesn't want us to walk past her. We got to jump over into the row in front of us. Those people are cool. They don't care at all. I don't get it. Have you never been to a sporting event? I get it's annoying. But if you don't want to stand up and move over for people that are going to get beers or drinks or merch or whatever, because I saw all of that last night because it's a fucking concert, stay home or better idea. Get your seat in the middle of the row so you know you're never going to have to stand up. I've never seen anything like that before. Eventually, it turned to the point where the guy beside us just kept calling her Karen over and over and over again. I thought there was going to be an altercation. Cooler heads prevailed. But eventually, they just bowled through towards the end of the show. And she was so rattled. But it was her own doing. I've never seen anything like that before. So if you are going to a show or a sporting event and you sit on the aisle, expect people to walk by you. Just expect it. That's what happens. Let's all work together out here for fuck's sakes. For Troll Joe Oilfield Rentals, that's the right sack beating. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. The voicemail. I got a lot of them this week because I'm late. 
The voicemail brought to you by Alpha Romeo of Edmonton. I recommend that you go drive a Tenali. The Tenali has landed starting at just $47,000. Book your test drive today. That is an entry-level SUV for a great car company. Of course, I'm driving the Stelvio right now. I feel very, very sexy. Adds a half inch to my wiener. Alfa Romeo of Edmonton. The website is alfaromeoedmonton.ca. alfaromeoedmonton.ca. Got it? Got it? Good. Uh, before we get into the voicemail, let's do a little quick... Oh, fuck. The... Hang on. <laughs> we have a high bidder. We have a new high bidder on the Donair thing. It is now $7,500 to primetime Donair. They took it away from Blowers and Grafton. Donair Wars. I love it. <laughs> anyway, first voicemail for Alfa Romeo of Edmonton goes to Chandler. Okay, so that whole thing from Dukes about Donkey Volley and the Badgers. Mm. That absolutely reminds me of Letter Kenny with the ostrich. I'm, I'm assuming you've seen Letter Kenny if you haven't. I- I've seen Letter Kenny. I wasn't an avid watcher. It was a good show. This wasn't my thing. I enjoy, you know what I like? I enjoyed the clips more than I enjoyed the show. I think it's the best way to put it. So I don't know the analogy, but I can kind of get where you're going. I highly recommend it. Or just for anyone who hasn't seen it, watch it. And then it was like, by the way, I'm too busy watching uh, Too Hot to Handle. I should have done, I might do a Too Hot to Handle breakdown. Would you guys, let me ask, ask this. This is a voicemail for you. Would you like if I just popped on and dropped five, 10 minute episodes every now and then? Sometimes, here's the reason I was thinking about it. I finished the first part of Too Hot to Handle, and I wanted to talk about it, but outside of my girlfriend, who poor poor girl has to listen to my shit all day, I wanted to talk about it, and I was going to jump on here and just record a quick recap of the first half of the season. I didn't know if anybody would want that, so let me know. Hit me up on any socials or in the voicemail. Back to you, uh, Chandler. I've cut you off a million times. I'm me thinking, which player, like hockey player on Letter Kenny, would you like to see on the Oilers? For me... Shorzy, I know it's probably like the the cheap answer, but like that dude is just such a beauty. And just imagine the damage like Shorzy and Kane could do to the other team just with their chirps alone. Be legendary. Uh, I don't know who Shorzy is. Mm, let me see if I can figure it out. There's Katie, Bonnie, Wayne, Stewart, Tannis, Jonesy, Dirks. Noah, Anita, Gail, Miss McCurry, McMurray, Roald, Daryl, Joint Boy, Gay, Anik, Devin, Riley, Coach, Jim, Glenn, Marianne, Angie, Tyson. Where the fuck is Shorzy, man? Anyway, I can't give you an answer to that because I just don't know the characters' names. I'm going to go Jim Playfair's kid, whatever his name is. Second voicemail, L C Y E G. Hey, Big Milk. Hello. L C Y E G here. Good day. So I was listening to our friend Ben talk about when he was an oiler for a day. Mm. And it got me thinking about random oilers that I've met. Um, so, quick story. When I lived in Calgary, I worked at an office building across from a hotel that the oilers always stayed at when they came. So, there was a. Battle of Alberta, so I knew the team would be there. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed my friend, the Flames fan, and we went across the plus 15 to the Starbucks just to, like, have a coffee, you know, as you do, hang out, and maybe hope to spot... Gently creep a little. Some oilers. And who walks in <laughs> but Sean Horkoff. Ah! So I was stoked. I walked... Waz, if you're listening to this, uh, Sean Horkoff used to be the captain a long time ago. Waz, that's for you, buddy. Yep. And I'm like, hey, man, love what the team's doing. And, like, this was in 2012. So the team was doing nothing, and he knew it, and I knew it. But I just needed an in. So I'm talking to him. Sometimes we need to lie to our heroes. They, If we're talking about 2012, the Yak draft or around that area, yeah, that was a bad team. That was a very bad team. And uh, I can only imagine Orcs like, ah, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yep. We're really going to try tonight. <laughs> and I shook his hand. And man, big milk. Mm-hmm. Point of the story is Sean Horkoff has the softest hand Ooh. I had ever felt. And I'm not talking about puck handling skills. 
I'm talking about the man exfoliate. Ooh, it was wonderful. Very nice. So anyways, I was just wondering maybe other listeners, um, any random meeting oiler stories? Question mark. Uh, thanks, Big Knock. Have a good summer. I would also like to know if you've got random oilers meetings. <clears throat> One time I was uh I'm trying to think of what year this was. Doesn't matter really. Early aughts, if you will. I was going to Nate and I was waiting for my old man to pick me up because, you know, I was a 19 year old kid going to Nate and I was just standing there at the appropriate or the uh, prearranged meeting place waiting for the old boy, waiting for his car, looking down the road, see if I can spot it, know where he's at. Standing right beside me, George LaRock. And I look over and all I went was, George! And he goes, hi, nice to meet you. And that was literally it. That was the only interaction. I just said his name to him and he said, hello. A different time, we were at the pint. <clears throat> we were downtown and we were partying. Me, you know, there's a handful of nation staff there and Waz had just started working with us. And without him knowing, he was sitting next to George Rock for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, Waz, look who's beside you. And he goes, oh! <laughs> he didn't actually make that sound. I'm making that sound. You get it. You get it. Anyway, if you've ever met an oiler and it's random, random spot, I'd like to hear about it. I've told that story before where I met Jack Campbell. I didn't meet him, but I yelled at him from a red light from my car to his car. Talked about that one. Anyway, Scott, you're up. Hey, Mr. Bag Milk. It's, hey, uh, hey, hey. Scott here. Uh, I haven't Shot out of a cannon. I love it. The voicemail in a while, but have some great news. Please. Me and the missus, we, uh, we had our first kid. Yeah. Uh, healthy baby boy. Um, but, uh, I can't hear you, Scott. You're getting an applause. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Back to you. This this uh, little life event that I've had leads me to a theory that I had about the Oilers losing in the playoffs. Go ahead. So I don't want to blame it on um, Mr. Stuart Skinner at all, right? He was a great player throughout the season. Um, but, uh, he definitely struggled in the playoffs like we all know, but, uh, one thing that happened to him before, um, the playoffs was he had his first child uh, and let me the, know. He blaming the baby. <laughs> Listen, all my sports heroes, you better have your kids already or none at all. That's what we're learning here. Anyway, Scott, I'm cutting you off. It is a fucking struggle. There is no <laughs> schedule. You're on the, the, the mercy of the kid, and uh, I don't know how you could be a professional hockey player and put out at that kind of caliber of level and still have a, a kid at home that's crying at all times of the night and just being absolutely having your world like turned upside down for what you're normally used to. So as a professional hockey player, to to, uh, to try and win a Stanley Cup and be consistent like, uh, like he was throughout the season is very, very tough uh, with a newborn child, so... That's just my theory. I'm pumped. I'm happy to be a dad. Um, and I'm sure Stuart Skinner is too. But uh, just thought I'd point that out and let you know what's going on. Have a good one. Bye. I don't have any kids. I've said that a bunch of times. But what I do know about them is they whine a lot and they cry and you need to feed them and shit. If only they could come out like cows where infant babies could just get up and walk around. Go up to mom and they eat when they're hungry and then they leave. Sometimes I get eaten by wolves. Sometimes. Did Stuart Skinner's child sewer the Oilers uh, playoff run? No, I'm not going to blame the kid. It's adorable. Adorable baby. Anonymous caller, who be you? Go. Good afternoon. Hmm. This is the donk here. Yep. <laughs> uh, chewy donkey. Did I do that one again? Yep, I did that one again. So, Chewy Donkey times two. <laughs> Damn it. 
etc. Yeah, I don't know why I'm trying to do a Chewbacca impression tonight. Um, it, it's probably a bit rubbish, but oh, good afternoon. I would like to do my. I would like to join you in trying to do an impression of Chewie. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, Arnold the Term the Terminator. I don't think this is actually going to be Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger, but um, we'll see. We'll see if it is. Vote Ben, presidential candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Ben as your president. I like how Ben's uh, Arnold impression is very like a Russian spy or like you'll see my what I'm capable of Mr. Bond. <laughs> uh, ben, I love it. This is the best. I am Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> that sounds like a dead ringer. If I didn't know better. Lest anybody think that was actually uh, the governor. You should vote Ben as president. He is very <laughs> smart. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm true. Or Ronald Schwarzenegger. <laughs> ben is better than the Terminator movies. <laughs> and that's saying something. Mm -hmm, they are good. Vote Ben for president. Well, I don't, I'm just, what can I say about that impression? Nailed it. Lest anyone think that was uh, the Terminator, it was not. You know? Ben actually now leaving a voicemail as Ben. I wonder if he's going to uh, interact with his alter ego. Now, I was thinking. Hmm. What's going on with the audio here, Ben? And this is mostly to Presto. To Presto. Why trade? Yes, okay. You just add his highest value. Mm -hmm. Um, But why trade a guy who just up, put up 100 points just because he's at the highest value he'll ever be? I mean, how are we going to get that much talent for that much money? anywhere else and how are we going to replicate the leadership and chemistry he has with the boys he makes mcdavid happy makes, makes me happy me happy makes Resto, me happy too stop trying to justify this it's just not <laughs> not smart mm -hmm. we listen i know we need a defenseman or whatever to win a championship quality hockey team but we also need reliable forwards and good chemistry and good vocal leaders yes we may have the, those all but nuge has been through it all you can't like yeah we need like a defenseman blah 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 like yeah but <laughs> Nuge just way more valuable i think you're pandering to me ben and I'll accept it. There's also the fact that we never touch on when we have these conversations, Presto and I. Nooch has a full no-move clause. He has got, I'm looking at Cat Friendly right now. <clears throat> that no-move clause runs all the way through 2028, 20, 29. So if Nooch don't want to go, Nooch go nowhere. It's really how you uh, got to look at it, right? So full no-move for Nooch. Full no-move. Man, He's going to have a career earnings worth about $100 million when all this is said and done. Just looking at Cat Friendly. Good for you, Nooch. Fuck yeah, buddy. Fuck yeah. Anyway, next voicemail is anonymous. G'day, boys and girls. Oh, and dudes. Welcome to this particular voicemail. Hmm. Um, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you can hear that noise in the background, I'm watching Orange is the New Black. I'm not actually inside a women's prison at the moment. Just I don't know that to be up. true. Now, to get to... Conjugal visits could be a thing. You could be smuggling. You could be muling. I'm just putting it out there. The meat and potatoes of this message. I just want to refute everything that 
Mr. Volley said in in his uh, I'm, uh, what, what can I I can only assume is plethora of, of voicemails that um we've just had to bear witness to. So apologies for. Well, he's moved on to Chewy now, so yeah, it goes. But you know, we got to humour him. We got to let him let him have his fun. Now the grown ups can talk though. So you know, <laughs> thanks, Donkey. Catch you next week. Um, <laughs> not even sure what he said. You two, I'm gonna make you two kiss, and it's gonna be romantic. I can feel the tension, but it's I can it. guarantee <laughs> that because I know that he said it. It's just not true, and 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 these constant <laughs> lies that continue to come in from from my opponent. Um, it's just, it's just bringing this whole process into disrepute. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, I just apologize to Ben. Like I'm big and tough and well, I'm not really tough. I'm, I'm big and fat. I'm big enough and fat enough to handle myself in these situations, but Ben shouldn't have to put up with donkey all his rubbish. <laughs> anyway, vote for Dukes. Best Chalmers impersonation on the podcast. That was good. It was good. I mean, uh, Ben came in heavy today with the Terminator impression. So Dukes, you're going to have some work to do, but, um, I think I have it planned out of what I want to do with you two. The time zones are weird though. So Dukes, you're in Australia. You're in Queensland. If I believe Queensland time right now. So it is seven o'clock here. It's 11 AM in Queensland. What about Northern England? Time in England right now. England. I think there's seven, six hours ahead. It's 2 a.m. Hmm. So I know what I want to do. I'm going to, I'm going to field questions from the audience. I'm going to write some myself. And then the three of us, Ben, Ben can pop in too if, if, if the timing works. We're going to work through it. And we're just going to do an episode of this podcast together and we're going to bullshit and we're going to laugh and we're going to have some fun. And are we going to get some presidential business done? Probably not, but we'll see the, 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 where I'm having a hard time with it is the time zones because I want both of you. I could do one-on-ones with each of you, but that's not as fun. I don't think so. That's where I'm struggling. It is 2 AM right now in England. It is 11 AM in Australia. It is 7 p.m. here in Canada. How are we going to make this work? Dukes, Donkey Valley, I need your help on the math. Boys, we got a group chat on Instagram. What do you think? I want to do a... What I want to do is do a Zoom call together for like an hour where we crack a couple of beers and we just talk nonsense. I think it would be fun. You guys are big contributors to the show. I would actually like to have an interaction as opposed to just you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk because I'm talking to voicemails. Got it? Captain Felton, what say you, sir? Hey, BM. Captain Felton here. Captain Felton. Last week, you were talking about what do we call the listeners of Better Late Than Never? Um, so- I did get a recommendation of Milk Duds. Milk Duds. I want to... Who, who said that? It made me laugh anyway. I'm going to give you credit if I can find you. Evan. Evan said Milk Duds. It's Milk Duds. Your followers are individually talked milk duds and collectively the milk duds i'm looking to see what i'm looking forward to seeing what captain has here well, i decided to come up with a couple nicknames please give me your thoughts go ahead silky milkies mm, ooh. milk duds another milk duds all right that one's getting traction silky milkies is just i just like that that just sounds romantic a little bit sexy skims mm. pouch pups Sour folk, pasteurizers, <laughs> curdies, dairy fairies, <laughs> and other buddies. Anyways, hopefully you can cop with some. <laughs> Captain Felton, that's fucking awesome. What was that one? <laughs> Made me love. Hang on, I'm gonna fast forward here. Hey, pasteurizers, pouch pups, milk yeah. duds, milk duds, skims, skims, yeah. pouch pups, mm-hmm. sour folk, mm-hmm. pasteurizers, curdies, dairy fairies. <laughs> And Utter Buddies. Utter Anyways, Buddies. Names. Give me your thoughts. What's that first one? Silky Milkies. Yeah, I like that. Milk Duds. Got it. Skims. Pouch Pups. <laughs> Pouch Pups is so fucking funny.
<laughs> uh, Captain Felton, you always crack me up, pal. You're due for a visit, I think. I haven't seen you in a minute. Although normally you're only here for Oilers related things that are important enough to get a captain on a plane and out to Edmonton. Anonymous caller, what say you? Good after. No. Oh. Uh, not, not, not pretending to be that fuckwit today. Oh, man, that was good. That was really um, good. Hang on. I got to do that again. Good after. Nah. Man. You would have had me, like, if you would have walked it through, I think you would have had me hook, line, and sinker on that one. Dukes with the uh, donkey volley impression. Not not, not pretending to be that fuckwit today. Um, Women's World Cup's kicking off, which for me will be yes, later on today by the time this podcast drops. For you guys, it might be tomorrow. I don't fucking know. Um, Australia, versus, uh, Australia and Canada are in the same group, which is a little bit <laughs> spicy. What I'm thinking is let's, let's have a little... Um, Let's let's have a little wager, like a little, you know, a little dare or a little bet or something around the result of that game. All right. That's, for me, it's Monday, 8 p.m., the kickoff for that one. Um, where is it going to be? That is in Melbourne. So ew, uh, I suppose if you've got to play somewhere. But, yeah, let's... Um, the interesting thing about Melbourne, Dix, is um, when I was in the city... In Melbourne, it actually felt very much like Edmonton. I don't know how to describe it, but when you're just walking around downtown in Melbourne, it feels like here. So I had like a, I was instantly tied to that city when I was there. Anyway, I'm absolutely down for a little bet on this, by the way. I don't know if you and I want to want to yep. discuss it off, off, offline or if you want to let other people choose the stupid, stupid challenge or I don't know. Or if you just want to say, fuck off, Sam, I'm not doing any of that. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Let us know. I'm down, hundred percent down. I just uh, can we have a charity component? That's all I would like. Like me buying you something, you buying me something, or whatever. It doesn't make sense. Let's let's do something for charity. If that works for you, let's let's take it offline. We can workshop that one. I'm absolutely in, Dukes. What's up, BM? What's up? It's Kali and Bomber. Uh, I haven't left the voicemail in a long time. I haven't seen you in a while. Not much going on. Where have you been? I know where you are. With hockey, of course. So I figured I'd jump on and uh, just do a quick talk about too hot to handle. Um, See, I knew my boy Kyle would come through with some too hot to handle content. He and I text about it. He goes, are you watching too hot to handle? And then he knows before I even answer that I'm watching it. He knows. Kyle, you know. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. It's only four episodes out for this season, so... If you do not want spoilers for Too Hot to Handle, you will plug your ears for the next, uh, what do we got left? 40 seconds. Oh, this, of course, is my favorite. This is my favorite part. Ooh, that thing happened again. That hasn't happened in a while. Part of this whole. Hmm. That doesn't happen in a while. I gotta check my levels. I learned how to fix that problem. And I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna adjust that. Let's try that again. What's up, BM? Kali and Bob. Talk about too hot to handle. There we are. We're back on um, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. It's only four episodes out for this season. So, it's great. But this, of course, is my favorite part of this whole show. It's the beginning anyway. Fuck the people getting to be better people. I don't care. Yeah, look at... Listen, we're here for some slutty activity uh, from both the boys and the girls. Uh, we don't want any personal growth here. That's not what I'm into. Uh, back to you, Kyle. I'm here for the drama. So I love that, uh, so far this season, my favorite part of course is always when the reveal happens, Mm -hmm. when they find out they're on too hot to handle Mm -hmm. and they just lose their fucking minds because they thought they were going to bang. Yeah. They all thought they were on like this horny getaway on a cruise ship this year. Uh, again, spoilers. If you're, if you don't want just fast forward, it is so good. They all came out thinking that they were going to go on a like a horny boating show. And it's absolutely the best. It is 1000% the best. For a whole summer. Like, how dumb are these people that they think they're going on a show just to bang on a boat? Um, besides that, uh, the different girls that want the same guy. Like, how fucking stupid are they? But, and then the guys that leave for the other girls and just 
Hey, Kyle, you're texting me like literally right now. You are texting me as I'm listening to you speak. Weird. Oh, I'm here for the drama. I love Absolutely the drama. Absolutely love it. So maybe next <laughs> week after the new episodes come out, I'll give a proper like analysis of the different people, how I feel about them and the drama. But for now, uh, as for the vote for Prez, I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm out. Kyle, I understand that you don't want to do spoilers, but I'm going to do a little bit. <clears throat> Let me go to walk through some of the cast here, see who I like so far. Yasmin is from Uruguay. She's 25, bottle girl. She's new to the show, so I'll save, I'll reserve judgment. Uh, Trey, relatively new to the show. I will reserve judgment. Uh, Dre is the um, 23 years old from Atlanta. He is the cop this season of what people are doing. Isaac, I don't mind you from New Jersey. You, you got the dumb guy thing going on. Alex, the guy from London. I don't mind him. He, another guy, dumb guy going on. <clears throat> uh, Christine. Tall drink of water, this girl. Lovely. Though, where the first half of the season ended, cliffhanger with Christine. And I can't wait to see what, what happens. Courtney, you're getting fucked around over and over again. Uh, Elise, you are a hot commodity. A lot of people want you. Hannah, you're also getting fucked over. Hunter, you're dumb as a... Man, you are dumb as rocks, bro. If you didn't have the blonde hair, six-pack look going on, you have nothing to value. Louis, or nothing of value. Louis is the dude who all the chicks want, and he had to pick between sleeping with three different girls. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the best. And uh, Megan, I kind of forget you're on the show. You're kind of a non-event, so I'm sorry about that, but you kind of are. Anyway, there you go. Too hot to handle. I love that show. I think, um, I don't think that's a fucking lie. As I continue to work through the Alfa Romeo voicemail, Alfa Romeo of Edmonton voicemail, highest bid now on the Donair costume is $8,000. $8,000. Ridiculous. Back to you, sir. But... You know, look, looking at this um, presidency, this dicta no, not a dictatorship. Not, no, it could be. Yeah. Um, I mean. Depends how we go. Looking at this election. Maybe the president rules with an iron fist. I don't know. And, and thinking about, you know, what, what it is the, the president or the leader or whatever we're going to call it is actually going to do for the community. Yeah. That's what I want to know. Um, I was listening to Real Life the other day. Yeah. Um, while I was driving around for work, and um, the Island Boys, discourse Island Boys, yeah, they kissed. Which is a lie, because again, I don't think I'm not capable of thought. But if those two dudes can kiss to make money for themselves, uh -huh. what's wrong <laughs> with you know? Wh why can't we get to? <laughs> Nation affiliated mm -hmm. uh, men to kiss for raise money for charity. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't have anyone particular. <laughs> I'm happy yes, to fly you do. over there and partake myself. <laughs> yes, you um, do. Is, is anyone here um, interested at all? You, sir, you look interested. What do, what do you have to say? I am super horny. <laughs> uh, I'll take that as a yes. Christopher Chalmers. That was a great clip by uh, Surveyor Brett, by the way. I am super horny. <laughs> uh, Dukes, don't tell me that you don't have one that you want to get your lips on. I don't believe you. <laughs> I can only imagine what... Uh... You know, the Oilers Nation citizens, they're kind of used to our shenanigans by now, so... It, the the new folks that would be really confused about I flew to I flew to Canada to kiss some people anyway <laughs> was what's going on bag milk is that time of the year again mm -hmm. starting to notice it a lot more on Go the ahead. road on the sidewalks on if you're gonna talk about killing fucking birds was you're gonna I'm hauling you into my office tomorrow morning we're gonna have a conversation my friend the grass deceased birds all <sighs> over Edmonton Damn I didn't it, notice was. it in Banff when I was down there. Damn Not it, was. Red deer. You know, it's weird. Maybe it's an empty thing. Maybe it's the weather. You know, the that kid definitely is killing all those birds, isn't he? He absolutely has to be killing those birds. Hey, listen. 
There are a lot of birds dying near our office. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence either. We know, you know, and I know that that kid is killing those birds. And now he's leaving messages, kind of like a Jeffrey Dahmer situation where he's like, I don't know how the birds are dying. I just keep seeing them everywhere. They just happen to be around me all the time. It's weird. Hot weather getting to the birds and they start falling from the sky. Maybe it's the smoke. Right? Different number of factors. I don't know. Maybe there's a culprit behind it. I, I can't say, but uh, I'm concerned for the birds. I love birds. He is confessing. He's legitimately confessing here. If you have a pet bird, keep it away from Matthew Wozniak. Just some, uh, some may not believe that, but I do. And, you know, interesting, interestingly enough, on my TikTok for you page, I had a uh, guy cooking <laughs> pigeons pop up on there. That was weird. Uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting, but weird. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, very weird, Was. That's all I got to say. I'm just concerned for the birds. How about you? <laughs> I love you, Was. You entertain me very, very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, bonus fucking content. Bag moves the daylight so you get even more of me. So yes, we do. Um, Matildas are just about to kick off. The fucking the World Cup. Dukes, I noticed that Canada doesn't have a nickname for the ladies at the Women's World Cup. What is that? Everybody else does except we don't. Like, where, who gives the nicknames? Do we give that to them? Should I crowdsource names? How does this work, Dukes? Sam Kerr's out for two games. That's huge. Best women's player in the world. I don't care. Fight me if you don't agree. Mary Fowler's replacing her. I'm going to give you updates as the game goes. All right. Because um, why fucking not? Sure. Let's go, girls. Ripping girls. Let's fucking go. As Dukes is uh, watching the Australian women's team at the Women's World Cup, we are still at $8,005 for the Donair costume auction. I mean, um, vote for Dukes. Don't give us a dickhead. Uh, ben, stop fucking swearing. I'm going to fight you down. All that stuff. Let's go, girls. Let's fucking. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. We're on the way. I'll check back in shortly. Um, yeah. Get a dog up, yeah. So, or not. I'm going to guess that these next two are also you, but we'll see. All right, I'm approaching half time. You've been fucking six minutes out of it on lots of stoppages mm-hmm. in this game. Both teams obviously playing with a bit of nerves. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Aussies are looking good. I have, have most of the possession. Um, Ireland looking pretty, you know, pretty fierce though. Like they they they're not here to fuck they're not here to fuck around, eh? They're certainly not fucking spiders. Um <laughs> lots of heavy tackles. They're, they're pretty quick out wide. Um Canada's gonna have their work cut out from against both of these sides here in a couple of days whenever you just fucking play them. Um Yeah, hopefully the girls can get it sorted. Uh we're still looking good, but yeah, fucking nil all. Nil all Nil all. There you go. Do we have another update on the Team Australia Women's World Cup game? Um, I've taken up enough of your time, but fuck. Matilda's won, thank Christ. (laughs) Ah, shit, I pressed the wrong button. Fuck. Um, But fuck. Matilda's won, thank Christ. 1-0, you know. It's sketchy. Uh, Both teams look good at times. Both teams look a bit dodgy at times. Uh, both teams looked very aggressive and <laughs> very violent at times. Um, violent? But yeah, fuck. How good how good is the Women's World Cup going to be? Strap yourselves in, ladies and gents. Fucking get amongst it. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to watch some games. Big, huge tournaments like this, they'll always get my attention. Always. Always. Yes, sir. Ari, you are next up. Okay, so I was just, I was listening to Oilers Nation every day with you, Liam, and Aaron. Mm-hmm. I think two days ago. Yeah, and you guys were talking about like the worst mistakes in sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since you were at the game last year, I want to hear kind of hear more about it. So, like when when Rasmus Anderson shot that puck from Jupiter. Yep. And it ended up in the back of Mike Smith's net. Hmm. What was it like? Like the seconds after it immediately happened, like the building, the energy in the crowd, how the team kind of reacted to it, like all of it in the moment or the seconds after it. Right. Cause. Oops. Fuck sakes. Cut you off. Again, okay. Right? So, cause you know, I see it on TV. Right. And it's like, you let in that goal and like, you wonder like what's going on. 
but like to be in the building for it is like a whole different story so like i want to hear more about it and what was that like you know being in that moment live in person yeah it was uh well not fun so the game we're talking about was the nuge game he ended up scoring the winner shortly after rasmus anderson popped that one from the fucking parking lot so from my spot in the arena i was about 10 rows up just over mike smith's left shoulder if you can kind of picture it rasmus anderson takes that shot i see it fly up into the air 10 15 whatever feet up into the air and as it's coming i see it i don't think mike smith sees it and as it's coming down he's not reacting as though he saw it so this is in real time i'm going oh fuck i don't think he's seeing it oh fuck he didn't see it bang and it's in the net so to answer the question one it was the realization from my angle that it was going in the net i figured it was going in the net before it got in the net so that was the first thing that was hurtful the second was the oilers were getting they started that game like a house on fire and then things just kind of fell apart a little bit as the game wore on calgary kind of had they got their mojo going uh edmonton gave up some chances and that goal ended up, I believe it tied it, if I can remember correctly. I think it did. So what happened in the building was it went from absolutely bumping to quiet. You've heard Roger's place be called the library before. That was loud to quiet the fastest I had ever seen. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just, Roaring crowd. Silence. And it stayed that way until Nuge got his goal. So, man, to answer your question, Ari, it was it was not good. It was grim in there. P.S. I have this message for the always awesome donkey volley and the always unpredictable Dooks, the weird Australian guy. <laughs> um, our presidential, mm-hmm. BL- BLTN yes. presidential candidates. That's right. And Ben, too. Well, no, not really Ben, but this Kinda is more ben. for the other guys. Go ahead. I'm not seeing enough mudslinging in this campaign, you guys. Mm. I would like to see some more mudslinging. Whoever sings the most mud between Dukes and Donkey Volley gets my vote. So, yeah. Ari just wants you to fight each other. Verbal sparring, if you will. I'm good with it. And that's how we're going to wrap up the Alpha Romeo of Edmonton voicemail. Thank you for contributing again, everybody. You guys rule. Alpha Romeo of Edmonton's where you need to go and test drive the Tenali. It's an SUV and it is beautiful. I got to sit in one, got to take some pictures of one. Go check that out on my Instagram. Go check them out at Alpha Romeo Edmonton. Alpha Romeo Edmonton.ca. One last check in on the Donair auction as I wrap up the podcast. It is now still at $8,000, which again, ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. So I want to say thank you to the fine folks at the audio department, Trilogy Oilfield Rentals, and Betway and Alfa Romeo of Edmonton making this all possible. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you guys all for leaving voicemails. There was a lot of them this week, and it was great. You're the best. You know, maybe just uh, watch out for Waz. That's all. Why won't you kiss me?